Howdy! In this video, we're going to talk about rotational energy. Now, just like with angular or with angular kinematics, how is extremely similar to linear kinematics? Exact same thing here. Your rotational energy is almost exactly the same as your um, well regular energy, I guess, or linear straight line energy. Now, uh, the only difference is, is I'm still going to use the chart, is I'm replacing my friction with rotational kinetic energy. And the reason that I'm changing that is because, of course, there's friction. If I take a look at this marker, if there was no friction and I threw this marker, it would slide. However, because there is obviously friction, when I push this marker, it rolls. And so it will have rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so the difference between rotational and translational kinetic energy is, let's say that I have a basketball and I'm spinning the basketball on my finger. That's only going to have rotational kinetic energy. However, if I take a bike wheel or like this marker and I roll it, not only does it have rotational kinetic energy, it also has translational kinetic energy because it's moving linearly as well. Okay, so some examples may only have rotational, some examples may have rotational and translational, depending if they're moving in a linear fashion as well as rotating. And so, the way you set up the chart is exactly the same, except I'm adding rotational kinetic energy, and rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared where I is, of course, your moment of inertia, and your omega is your angular velocity. Now, keep in the back of your mind that V is equal to R omega, because we will be using that relationship every time. So let's take a look at this example. Taking a look at this example, what I have is that a bike racer is going downhill with a velocity V naught when one of the tires of mass M comes off. The wheel has a radius r, a moment of inertia i. The wheel comes off when he is at a point some height h a meters above level ground. What is the final linear velocity of the wheel when it reaches the ground? And we're going to assume that the wheel just rolls all the way down. And so once again, we're just going to set up our energy chart. I first start off with potential energy due to gravity. Initially, you're at mgh, and at the end, you're on the ground. As for translational kinetic energy, you are moving linearly both at the beginning and at the end. So it'll be one half mv naught squared and one half mvf squared. In rotational kinetic energy, we are doing that, right? It is rotating at the beginning and it is rotating at the end. So you go one half i omega naught squared and one half i omega f squared. Finally, for your spring, there is no spring, but even if it was just like we did in the past, just add either whether it's compressed or stretched initially or at the end. That was your one-half kx squared. Anyways, once we have this chart set up, you set all your e naughts equal to your EFs. And so I come here, I have mgh, one-half mv naught squared, you know, doing that. But at this point, we have an issue. And the issue is, is I'm looking for final velocity, which, which is cool and everything. But I have three unknowns in this one equation. Omega naught's unknown, VF is unknown, omega F's unknown. So how the heck am I going to solve for VF? That's where you utilize this relationship. If V is equal to R omega, I'm replacing every omega with V over R. So this omega naught is V naught over R. This omega F is VF over R. And so whenever I do that in squaring, right, this omega naught squared is V naught squared over R squared. This omega F squared is VF squared over R squared. And now you're left with that one unknown. You're left with that VF to be unknown. From there, it's easy algebra. You just factor out and divide. And then this would be your final velocity. Now your solution looks pretty intimidating. But as you can see, the process really isn't too bad. Let's take a look at one more example though. There's one more type of situation that you're going to see that I need y'all to know how to do. And so for this last example, what we have is we have multiple objects. What I've got is I've got a block here. I will call that M1. We've got a block here. We'll call this M2. 
and I've got a pulley that rotates. And since the rope does not slip, I want to find the speed just before this block strikes the ground, this block being 10 kilograms, this block being 5 kilograms. What you're going to do when you have multiple objects, I have a block 1, a block 2, a pulley, you're going to do, an, you're going to do a chart for each individual object and then set all the E naughts equal to all the EFs. And so in this example, what I need to do is I need to do a chart, an energy chart for M1, M2, and for my pulley. So let's focus just on M1 just for a second. For M1, it has an initial energy, all of its all potential. And then at the end, when it hits the ground, all of its kinetic, so you have a one-half M1 VF squared. Now, let's focus on block two. Initially, it is not at some initial height. It has no potential energy. Initially, it's not moving. Initially, it's not rotating. Initially, it's not on a spring. Initially, there is no energy in block two. However, at the end, it'll be raised some height h, right, as one goes down, the other goes up. Block two is going to be going up. And then at the end, it'll also have some final velocity. And so it'll have potential and kinetic energy at the end. Now let's focus on the pulley. As for the pulley, yes, initially it is at some height h, or some height, whatever it is, but at the end it's at that exact same height. There's no change in potential energy. And so initially, once again, there's no energy within that pulley. However, this pulley is not moving linearly. It's only rotating. Therefore, it's only going to have rotational kinetic energy. It'll have a one-half I omega F squared. But remember, what am I looking for? I'm looking for speed. I'm looking for my linear velocity, so I'm going to replace that omega with V over R. That way, that omega F squared is just VF squared over R squared. And once you set up an energy chart for each object individually, you set all the E naughts, which is just the M1GH, equal to all the EFs. And what's going on in this problem is all the energy is stored here in this block 1, and after it's released, it's dispersed among different kinetic energies, whether it be translational or rotational, into potential, and just all gets transferred into all the different energies, into all the different objects. And then from there, it's just basic algebra to solve for that VF. And what I did is after I solved for that VF, what I did is I moved this M2GH to the other side, and then I factored out and divided. And of course, since that VF was squared, you take the square root. And when you plug in all the numbers given, that's where I got 16.3 meters per second. Okay, so once again, energy now is pretty much exactly the same as before, except you'll have to add rotational kinetic energy Okay? And then, if you have multiple objects, do a chart for each object individually, and then set all the E-naughts equal to all the E-Fs.